Hey, look! There are enough chili here to give you hot lips for at least three months. Today, I'm going to take you to the local spice market in Sichuan. Spice up your life next on Martin Yen's China. This is the largest market in Chongqing, Sichuan, right along the Yangtze River. I'm going to go down and check it out. There's a lot of wonderful things here. Mm, you know what it is? The typical, the most popular Sichuan chili paste. Ah, this is what makes a lot of Sichuan dishes. Today I'm very fortunate because I have the local culinary guy, Helen, to come with me to introduce me to all these wonderful Sichuan food and ingredients. Ah, how are you, Helen? Fine. Helen has been living in Chongqing for many, many years and she speaks better English than me. They say variety is a spice of life. Well, in Sichuan, you could spend a lifetime studying the variety of spices. Walking through the market, my eyes water from all kinds of chilies, and my mouth waters too, just thinking about the tasty dishes that would be made from all these beautiful seasonings. That's pepper powder. Oh, this is the Sichuan pepper powder. This is yeah. from this. Yes, right. You know, from this. Wow, pretty strong. Sure. Very good. You use this to make a lot of Sichuan dishes. A lot of Sichuan this dishes. Is a, this is the characteristic flavor from right. Sichuan. And then also uh, in Sichuan dishes, I noticed they also use a lot of uh, farwa beans. Look at this. Look at this. Yes, one. yes. What do you use this for? For this jam. Oh, this is, you use this to make a dish. Y right. Uh, take a look at this. Yeah. You use this to make a lot of these. This is the chili sauce. They make a lot of these with chili and farwa, right? Right. Oh, wonderful. That's the basic sauce for the Sichuan food. Sauce. Mm, Helen, I love mushroom fungus, but I've never seen so many of them. What are they? What are all of these? Actually, I cannot name them all, and let's ask this Yeah, ask lady. the owner. Ask yeah. the lady. This is Straw mushroom. This Beef calf liver. Calf liver mushroom. This is a jijongjun. Especially Yunnan fungus. These are all wonderful, fresh, and um, Preserve one in brine. Look at all of those are also they are dry. dehydrated. Wow, this this market is wonderful. You know, so many different things. You know, I have yes. not seen a lot of these things. It's the biggest market in Chongqing. Oh wow. Mm, Helen, look at all these fresh cuts of meat. Yes, in Sichuan people like to have meat fresh. Fresh. Yeah. No frozen meat. No, they go to the I market agree. every day. Wonderful. Hey Helen, look at yeah. this. I love this. This, this is, is a... famous in Chongqing. Chongqing. It's called Bai Shi Yi Ban Ya. Ban Ya means a, a flat duck, pressed duck. Look at this. Right. Smells good. Also tastes good. Tastes good. Here in Sichuan, cooks find a million ways to cure, pickle, and preserve absolutely everything from meat and poultry to vegetable to some exotic ingredients that just have to speak for themselves. <laughs> Tongue, a pig's tongue. Whoa, whoa. a lot of uh, speechless <laughs> pigs around here. Hey, Helen, I smell yeah. a lot of good, interesting pickle, brine stuff here. Yeah. Mm, what is this? That's typical Sichuan pickle. Sichuan pickle. Oh, yeah. lobo. This is um, green radish. Yeah. And this sure. is? Bai lobo. This white. is white radish. Yeah. White radish. And this part is? Xuan cai. Xuan cai. It makes very typical Sichuan food too. Whoa, hey, now I know what this is. This is a dry dao si. That's black fermented bean. black bean. What is this? Th they are the same, but same. different kind of, oh. uh, differently preserved. Yeah. This is dry and this is wet. This is yeah. called? Shui dou shi. Shui dou shi means wet. Yeah, with water. Yes. Yeah. 
I've seen also pickled ginger. Oh, wow, yes, very interesting. that's for food, for different dishes. Pickled scallion, how do you use it? Uh, we call that jiao tou. They are jiao different from uh, garlic. But this is a scallion, pickled scallion, and this is one of my favorite. I love it. You do? And this, I can eat this, and this is good for you. That's very made typical, from right? very long beans. Long beans, see? Like that, bean? right. Long beans made yeah. of the long beans. And you pickle it, pickle and, it and then you and can fry it. it. What is this? To get the flies away. Oh, to scare the flies away. Oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> Helen, I love this market. Full of action, excitement, color, and a lot of aroma. Yes. Thank you for being such a gracious host. You're welcome. I'm going to show you how to make this fortune meatball noodle soup. Very simple. Here, I have some broth here, and I already have cooked some noodles. And then, now, I'm going to show you some of the vegetable, pickled vegetable. I just kind of, this is Sichuan pickle. Sichuan pickle from Karabi. And it's Sichuan peppercorn, made with Sichuan peppercorn, salt, and chili powder. Here, I have some ground meat. You can use any ground meat. You can use ground turkey, ground chicken, okay? And I put this together. I put, to make it nice and flavorful, I put a tiny, tiny bit of garlic and ginger, too. Tiny bit of garlic and ginger. Ah, beautiful. And then I put a tiny bit of pepper, tiny bit of salt. Ah, no problem. Tiny bit of cornstarch. Why do you use cornstarch? And also, why do you use a tiny bit of water in your broth? Because to make it nice and moist in the meat, okay, to make the meatball. Put a tiny bit of oil. This is very, very Chinese technique. And to make the meatball, look at this. Now, you mix them all up. Now, let me show you how easy the Chinese people make the meatball, okay? Now, this is how the Chinese would do it. You hold this up and you go, huh? Uh, and now, hey. and now, hey. you know why to do that? You get rid of some of the air bubble, so the meatball is firmer. And then you use, let me show you how to make a meatball. You hold on to this, you put this right over here, and you squeeze, 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 and then you have, ah, one meatball right out of here. This one meatball, okay? Ah, let me show you one more time. You, you squeeze, you squeeze, you squeeze, you squeeze, squeeze, ah, ah, ha, another meatball. Perfect meatball. You make a whole bunch of meatball like this, okay? This is boiling. I'm gonna put the chili, I want the, the flavor, and the Sichuan pickle already right in here. And I put a tiny bit of, ah, mushroom. Wood ear mushroom is good, naturally thin, but the Chinese believe this is very, very healthy because they did a study. They think they naturally thin your blood so you don't have to take drugs to thin your blood. It's very, very good, okay? This is very nice. And then I put the meatball right here the meatball. I make a few extra meatball, and I put the meatball right here. One, okay? This is, you know why they call it good fortune meatball? Because it's nice and round. Nice and round in Chinese culture resemble good luck and good fortune because everything is perfect and everything is nice and round. That's the reason why. And then we flavor it with a tiny, tiny bit of vinegar. This is Jingjiang vinegar, uh, black vinegar, okay? Very popular, okay? Vinegar and a tiny bit extra, extra pepper. You want to make it nice and flavorful. Hey, how about Sichuan stuff is hot and spicy. Hey, some sesame seed oil is flavorful. How about some chili oil? In Sichuan, they use a lot of chili pepper, chili oil, dry chili, pickled chili, all kind of chili. This is chili oil. Wow, very, very hot. And then, if you don't have the regular Jingjiang vinegar, you know what? Use the regular distilled white vinegar. Okay, give that nice flavor balance. Oh, this is very good. I have this beautiful. And then finally, I put the noodle right back in because the meatball is nice and done. You don't want to overcook them, okay? I put the noodle back right in here. So it is the good fortune noodle soup. Ah, this is it. And then we'll show you how to serve this, okay? Here, I have a big bowl, a beautiful soup bowl here, and I have some noodle. And I twist this a little bit, I put in a, a chiso leaf, and I put it right in the middle. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at that, huh? And I sprinkle a tiny bit of Sichuan pepper powder on the top, and I sprinkle a tiny bit of mm, chili pepper 
on the top and makes it look beautiful. And then, look at this. I am going to show you. We're going to put the meatball. This is so beautiful. I put the meatball right here. And I put the meatball right here. And I put the meatball right here. And I put five meatball. Okay? One meatball right on top of this beautiful noodle. Look at this. Mmm. Look at that, huh? Look at it. And then I put all of these wonderful ingredients right in here. Wonderful ingredient right in here. You know what? This is what you have. If you want to have more color, hey, the red chili is good and it's wonderful. And I love it, okay? Look at this. This is so beautiful. Ah, this whole dish is so easy to do. How about some chive, okay? Beautiful. How about a beautiful leaf? And then how about a couple pieces of this red chili? Huh? This is what makes the dish look beautiful. Ah, some sesame seed. Ah, you know what? So far, I have presented you a beautiful, wonderful, fortune me bowl noodle soup. Next, the nightlife in Chongqing, and I'll make some wonderful forest garden stir fry. I'm walking along the south shore of Chongqing. A few feet away is the famous Yangtze River. Here on the south shore, you can enjoy a free concert while you dine outdoors on some of the best food in Sichuan. That reminds me, I have a day for dinner. Everybody knows in China, this is the fact. Long look for beautiful women. You come to the province of Sichuan because the weather, the water, and particularly the food produce a lot of beautiful people, particularly young ladies. And here with me is three beautiful young ladies from the province of Sichuan, Chongqing. Yeah. This is uh, what I call the um, pickle vegetable banquet. Everything is prepared with pickle. After this delicious banquet, I'm going to ask for permission to go into the kitchen and have Chef Lee, the master chef, to show me how to do all of these wonderful things. Hey, I saw two big urns. This is not for your flowers. This is really hot. Big urn, and I think it's an oven. Inside there's a lot of little soup pot in clay pot in a pot. Whoa, look at this. One of these is called for our dinner tonight on our table. Mm. Well, you can't have a pickle vegetable banquet without all sorts of homemade pickles. Let's see what we have here. Oh, you know what this is? <laughs> a lot of pickle daikon, pickle right reddish. Look at this, it's very uniquely designed. Huh? This is higher. Water here, so when you cover this up, it's a total complete seal. Mm, make sure, do it very, very slowly. Very slowly. Move them, move them, move them. Let the air comes out. Oh, look at that, that's it. Totally sealed, because the water is right around here. There's no transfer of air. So this way, you can pickle things anywhere from uh, two to three days up to six months. Now the big pieces, three to six months, and the long beans, three or four days is good enough. Look at this, whoa, look at this. The whole fish, fish head, the fins, the spine, the fish fillet. I'm gonna take it over to the steamer and steam it for eight minutes. Ah, won't you? Now, out the eight minutes, it's all done, ready to be final touch. Make it more colorful. Chopped bread, 
green and red chili. Oil. Chili oil. Hot chili oil. Sesame seed oil. Then put it right on top of the steamed fish. It is so hot, it sizzles. Sizzle with hot oil. Ah, how about a second dish, also with a lot of pickle. Oh, this pickle vetro, this pickle mustard green. Very salty, okay? And then what you do is, you slice it all up, and then pickle chili. Huh? Beef, stir-fried beef. Now this is how the Sichuan chef at home, they have the pickle. There's a water seal here, that's totally sealed. The water, you see this? I lift this up, this is the water right here, and then you're ready to go. Look at that, never overcook. Temperature and time control. This way, the beef will be nice and smooth and tender and juicy and succulent. Chili. And then braise it with a tiny bit of uh, chicken stock, soup stock. Let it braise. Now seasoning, tiny bit of chicken powder, salt and pepper. Chili oil. Chili oil. Ah, this is the dish. And this is the life here in Sichuan. The days may be hot, but when the sun goes down, that's when things really get hot and spicy. Watch. I need this ingredient in the fridge. I have this beautiful chicken that I saved for the audience. And I'm gonna show you how to bone this chicken in 18 seconds or less. Don't blink, if you blink, I finished the chicken already, okay? Because this is gonna be go well with the forest garden stir fry, okay? Here, I have a beautiful chicken. And this chicken is so huge and it's so tense, you cannot cut through even with a sharp knife. So you gotta learn the Chinese secret, which I learned from an elderly man in the city of Chongqing, Sichuan. This is ancient secret. Is that you gotta relax your chicken because when the chicken is nervous, you cannot cut through this. So the way to do it is you use only three fingers. You go up and down, up and down, circular motion. Only up and down, don't waste time to go horizontal movement. Only up and down, circular motion, and then you <laughs> wing it, okay? You wing it, and then you know what? The chicken is totally relaxed. Look at this. Nervous, relax, relax. Now, pay attention, 18 seconds. Time it, okay? Three, two, one. One cut, another cut, turn around outside, one cut, hold the whole back, hold it, this stone, the chicken, a whole chicken comes out, and the whole comes out like this, and the tender on this side comes out like that, please come out, and the tone it around outside, and this joint with chicken, chicken butt, comes out like this, and a whole little piece of chicken butt, comes out like that, and lots of routine tender on, comes out like that. Nice and done. Let me show you the chicken breast right here, that which I use. I cut in a 495 right here. The beautiful piece of chicken breast, 495. 18 seconds or less. And then I put this over here and I'm gonna save it for tomorrow and do another dish. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you how to butterfly this, okay? I butterfly this with my sharp knife, okay? And then I will use my knife to tenderize this a little bit. And then I even tenderize it like this. And then I cut it at an angle like this. One, two. This is like a sushi. Very thin slices like this. Continue to cut. Continue. Continue. And when I mean, you do it at home, do me a favor. Don't cut it like this. Cut it at an opposite angle. It's very important, okay? Cut it, cut it, cut it. You know, when, I, when we were in Chongqing in the night market, the wonderful thing is uh, the night activity is you go to the restaurant, people actually sing for you. And you pay them about uh, 50 cents US and they sing two or three songs. It's amazing. Great entertainment. They sing all kind of local songs, folk songs, and uh, in fact, rock and rolls. <laughs> amazing. And they use guitar and Chinese. And, Transfer this and put it right here. Look at this. Once again, you transfer. Put it right here. Hey, transfer. And then in the meantime, I'm going to marinate this with a tiny, tiny bit of salt and pepper and cornstarch. 
And sometimes some Chinese restaurant also use a tiny bit of egg white to call the velvet thing. Because I'm gonna do this, show you how interesting this to velvet this, okay? And you put this together and look at this, very simple. And then put a tiny bit of oil. Not much, just a tiny bit of oil, okay? And then, and then we're gonna velvet this. Uh, sometimes you can use oil velveting or call oil blanching. And this is what called water velveting or called water blanching, okay? This technique is very, very uniquely Chinese. You put this over here and lightly cook this with hot water. And then you put this like this. And then you do it very, very low. You see this? And then you partially cook this, okay? This is what is partially cooked. Beautiful, nice and white, okay? Look at this, this is almost ready. 85% done. Velvety, okay? In the meantime, I'm gonna turn this on and show you how easy to cook this wonderful garden forest stir fry or forest garden stir fry with velvet chicken, okay? And I put a tiny, tiny bit of garlic. I love garlic, okay? I love ginger. Use a lot of ginger. You can actually grow ginger huh, right in your garden. Oh, beautiful. And then I velvet the chicken. The chicken is all velvet. Look at this, nice and white and beautiful and smooth. Look at this, look at how beautiful this is. Nice and beautiful. And I put it right over here. Ah, this is how fast you can do it, okay? Put it right over here. Ah, right over here. Whoa, that's the reason why very few Chinese chefs have real eye drop. Whoa, <laughs> it's gone. Nice and hot. And then I put this right here. Look at that beautiful color. This is a very, very simple dish. Everybody can do at home. Look at this. Ah, look at this. This is how you call stir fry. Make sure when it fries, you stir it. Put a tiny bit of homemade soup stock. Put a tiny bit of wine. Ah, wine. And I put a tiny bit of soy. Ah, this is very simple. And then if you, because of Sichuan, we're gonna have some Sichuan chili sauce. Sichuan chili sauce. Very nice, look at this. Chili oil, you can see the chili oil. You can see the chili oil, okay? And then a half a teaspoon of chili sauce. And this is all you need. And then, you know what? You do not have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry about thickening this up because it's already thickened. You know what? The whole dish is done. Always serve with rice. Beautiful dish is gonna be here. And it's so easy to do. That's why I always say, if Yan can, so can you. If Yan cannot, <laughs> you still can. And amazing. Look at that, I am not kidding. This is a beautiful dish that everybody can do it. And we'll put a little chili here, a little green stuff here, and a little bit of sesame seed on top. You know what? If Yen can cook soup and stir fry, so can you. Jajen! <laughs>